Hey you guys, it's Mikkel um, with the Monson Schoolhouse. We are a homeschool family of I have four kids and um, today I'm going to take you guys through the curriculum that I'm using for my six-year-old, Drew. I'm sitting right by his desk, his workstation, and um, he is in first grade. So give you a tour of how I set up his desk, how um, we kind of do his work all day, the curriculum that we've used, and how it has worked this year. As you can see in the back, he wrote me all by himself this adorable note on the board last night, and I can't, I just can't get myself to erase it. These are the rewards you get for teaching your own kids at home. Before I dive into his curriculum, I know many of you watching are kind of thinking about homeschooling or feeling the stirring in your heart. And um, I just want to be someone that can be of courage and motivate you and help you and, and testify to you that it is the right thing to do in these times that we live in. It is worth it. You can do it. Um, it is. It opens up doors that you would never believe. And it works. It works by educating your children um, academically but also by shaping their character, their testimonies, and their spirit, and building that strong foundation in Christ. This year, I just got to the basics with Drew and um, just trusted. Drew has been able to read fluently. He writes stories. He, he it, it works. You don't have to put in a ton of time. You just need the right things. So I just wanted to tell you guys that I have three older kids, older than Drew, and I have, and they were in public school through kindergarten, first grade, and I have seen how they developed and what kind of writing they did when they were in first and second grade. And I can, for a fact, tell you that Drew's writing, his spelling, his comprehension is two, one or two grade levels above. That is a fact for my own kids. Now that I'm seeing this, now I'm seeing how much better he already is than my other kids were at that stage. I, I wish that I would have homeschooled my children from the beginning. But with that being said, I'm going to take you guys through the curriculum that I use with Drew. Okay, so this is Drew's workstation. Drew, do you want to wave? He wanted to read his book right now. I'll talk more about that a little bit later. But this is where Drew is. As you can see, he has his all his work right there and I'm going to take you through um, his curriculum and everything. Um, he has his reader on his desk, his new book he got that he's starting to read. He has his work day. This is how he does his work. I did another YouTube video on that. That's all his work he does. He has his glue, scissors, crayons, um, and he keeps his pencil over here. We use this in kindergarten to help tie his shoes, but now we use it as a pencil holder. Um, we keep this little dry eraser board on his desk he uses all day. He has all his numbers and um, we like his little chore card. And I just kind of like to put up things he does in reading lesson. Um, and his numbers, this is from Math K, and we just keep it up all the time because it's awesome. So we are going to go through Drew's curriculum right now. Okay, so I got this little toolkit at Michael's and it has worked great. Um, and I'm just gonna start with how we start his day. So I have these little, um, they're kind of like folders. I can list them in the link below. Um, we, this is the first folder that we start his day with. Um, and I just kind of stuff everything in here um, in three different sections to go through his day. So we start the day with prayer journal. And I made these myself. Um, I just have lined paper in here and he prays and writes down what he feels the spirit told him. So this is the first part of our day. Um, then we move on to scripture. And I have one of these little notebooks for his scripture for his New Testament. How we do scripture is we all read the New Testament together and he has his New Testament book. Um, so I will get a page that we are studying together 
Um, so say we're studying this together, he will read through it on his own. So he reads these, he tells me what he read, he participates in our discussion, and then what I do is I get a Bible verse from the story that he read. I put it on the board and he copies it in his book. So for instance, this one, for the bread of God is he which cometh down from heaven and giveth life unto the world. He copy works it and then he draws a picture. Um, so after that, after we do scripture, the older kids do memorization and he does handwriting. Now you guys, he's on level four handwriting in the good and the beautiful. Um, he has been tearing through these. We only do one page a day, but um, in kind his kindergarten year, he went through book one and two. Um, and then in his first grade year, he is going through book three and four. He's done with this book, which he's almost done with. I am going to have him go back to level three and start level three again. Um, Cause I don't think he's ready to move on to cursive. He's just gone so fast through these. So that is handwriting. Now after handwriting, I have other things in here that, you know, activities we've done. Um, sometimes he does this book. If we have extra time in Bible study and he needs to do an activity, I'll put this in front of him. That is basically the morning chunk right there. Okay. So I went through the morning packet. Now, now we move on to the next one. Get one of these composition notebooks and I have him do copy work. So while he's sitting at his desk and I am working with the older ones, what I would do is I would get these little notebooks. I would get his reader. I would either have him choose a page or I would choose a page from his reader. Um, and then I would ask him to copy this page onto his notebook. So as you can see, he's already done a lot of the pages. So he copies it into this notebook. He optional, he can draw a picture. Um, sometimes he chooses not to. After he copy works that, then I ask him to read the story silently to himself. Now at the beginning of the year, he needed to read these to me. He actually needed help reading these. He was, he was very slow at the beginning of the year. So you guys don't think that your child is gonna be reading level one silently by themselves when you start. It just didn't work that way. So at the beginning of first grade, we would actually read this. He would read it to me together and we wouldn't even read the whole story in one day. I guess maybe a week to work through a story. That was the beginning of the year. Now come December, halfway through the year, his reading totally took off and I started having him read one story a day silently as I was working with the older kids. Um, and then he would tell me about the story when we did our lesson. So as you can see, the beginning of the book is a little bit easier. Um, and then as it gets to the end, it gets harder reading and more advanced. Um, and the stories are just filled with light and goodness, excellent messages. They're engaging. And he really did love this. He's read this book three times through. You're supposed to read this book two times through. Um, he's read a lot of these stories over and over again. So we are actually done with this book. Um, I think he's mastered it. So I will, when the other, older kids are doing their copy work, I give him more advanced books to read. So we just got this. This was in the Good and the Beautiful curriculum. And he is now reading things like this. This is the end of his first grade year. I just wanted to emphasize to you guys that you don't need a ton of programs. Um, just by getting the good and the beautiful language arts and by doing the copy work alone. Copy work is so powerful in teaching sentence structure, grammar, handwriting, and vocabulary and spelling. I had no idea until Drew started doing copy work this year from good books um, that it would be such a huge impact and change the way he writes it it is a miracle worker you do not need any other curriculums um with the good and the beautiful you don't you really just need to go to the basics and do copy work let's talk about language arts because we're kind of there anyway so for language arts it's no surprise i know you guys all know that i use the good and the beautiful um i have used it for 
two years so far. I'm going into my third year using the Good and the Beautiful and I am sticking with it. It works. It's amazing, excellent. It, it's everything, you guys. It's everything and without all the fuss. It's everything with all the simplicity you can ask for. I give you these little mini books and I put them in here. Um, but I use a lot of extra reading materials on my own and I'll show you some of those. Um, we do use the reader and then also a lot of other books. So these are the little golden books and I used a lot of these as um, me and Drew reading together and copy work. Drew, do you like these books? Yes. He really enjoys these books. Let me show you the puppy one because this was one of his oh, first. Oh yeah, I like that yeah. one. This was one of his first ones that I pulled and, and he did copy work from it and we read. So. My little puppy's dug a hole under the fence and went for a walk in the wide, wide world through the meadow. They went down the road, over the bridge, across the green grass and up the hill. These are excellent for first grade. They tell fairy tales. Oh, this is the cutest one ever. Great. This is usually towards the end of first grade or halfway through. Um, Drew read The Chocolate Touch. He really loved that book. Um, he was just reading this Gulliver Travels. So this is a perfect age level, perfect level for like middle to end of first grade. Um, he likes these Magic Treehouse books. Um, as you can see, they're a little bit more advanced, which I would say middle to end of first grade was is part of the good and the beautiful curriculum they use this towards the end this one is excellent for the second part of first grade in the springtime excellent book drew has been diving into this the last couple days great so these are the more advanced kind of things that we're we're reading um, but again beginning of the year i would stick with the golden books and drew wanted to go into math and I just did a math review, so it's not any mystery <laughs> what math I use. Um, but I'm using the Good and the Beautiful Math 1. Now, the first part of first grade, we used Math K because his kindergarten year in math was pretty, it was not successful. Um, if your kindergartner it was in public school or, you know, the first year was not successful, I would suggest maybe starting with Math K to build that strong foundation of number sense um, and then and have fun and, and bring that life and fun back into school that maybe they didn't have um, and then move on to math. We are now almost in the second half of Math 1. I plan to finish Math 1 before the end of summer and then come fall, his second grade year, we're going to go right into Math 2 because it's releasing. Okay guys, for science, Drew tags along with me, with the older kids. Um, these are an example of good science units for a first grader. Space science, we actually did that in his kindergarten year, but that'd be great for first grade. Introduction to energy is the perfect science unit for kindergarten, first grade, second grade. Excellent, has a lot of interactive activities. We really love that. And then right now we're doing marine biology. And with all of these units, I just get one of these little clear notebooks and I kind of copy the cover, put it in there, write their name on it, and he puts all his little activities in there. Um, as far as history, honestly, if I just had a first grader and below, I would not do a history unit. But because I have older children, we do history, we did Middle Ages, we did Rome, we do a lot of history in our home, and so for history, he tags along with us and he listens to the audio stories. Um, it's kind of over his head, right? It's a little bit over his head, but he's there coloring with us and it's fun. So you guys don't stress it. You do not need to do a hardcore history course for a kindergarten or first grader. Just have fun with them. Do these cute science courses, you know, do little President's Day activities and study little things here and there. but. Just don't stress about it at all. So for crafts, for kindergarten and his first grade year, I used this book. I also have a 12 year old daughter, so I kind of put her in charge of going on Pinterest and finding something for Drew. So we always have something going on for him. 
something easy. You do not have to make this hard, you guys. During springtime, we start cracking this open. We are just going into spring, so we're gonna start doing a lot of hikes and doing lots of nature studies. So this is what I use for a nature notebook um, for Drew and for all the other kids. Okay, so this is Drew's piano practicing. Hold on, Drew. Okay, so he started this in first grade. This is the book he uses. He practices about 30 minutes a day as part of his schoolwork. Did you want to play for us, Drew? Yeah. All right, so that is Drew's first grade curriculum video. Drew, do you want to wave? What do you want to tell the kids out there that are going to start homeschooling and doing the curriculum? What do you want to tell them about first grade? Mm. To know what you're doing. It's fun. Okay. Um, is there any advice that you have for these kids that are going to start learning from their mommies? Um, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe to listen to their mom? Yeah, listen. There we go. <laughs> Do you like your teacher? Yeah. Do you think it's fun to have your mom teach you? Yeah. Good. You've learned a lot, haven't you? What was your favorite thing you did in your first grade year? It's not over yet, but so far. What was your favorite thing you did in school? Math. Oh, good job. And, All right. What? And, and um, writing, copy work, copy work, and copy work. Okay. And re do you like your reading? Math and copy work. That's a good, good advice. Okay, well, why don't you tell everyone good luck? Good luck. Bye. Bye.